you're not a failure if you realize that you can't go no contact, that you have a hard time going no contact. It has nothing to do with your resilience or your strength. It's really about the system that you have in place. Let me explain. I get my xback.com. Everyone deserves a second chance. So first of all, why no contact? No contact because you've probably tried to reach out to your ex to communicate, to get back with them by messaging them, by seeing them, etc. Or trying to forget the relationship is still being in touch with them and you feel it's hard to heal. So basically what you're doing is not working. And the only option, even though you feel scared, you uh, don't want to even imagine not talking with your ex, is going no contact. But the reason no contact is so efficient, and I'm saying this from a therapeutic point of view, is that it creates the right environment for you to reflect on the breakup and heal. You will get back with your ex if you want to get back with your ex, you will forget and move on if you want to move on. But it's important to understand that if you want to achieve any of those goals, you need to go to contact at some stage because that would provide focus and clarity. And that's what you need right now. So first of all, before I explain the system, you need to understand habits and how they're formed. So if you have this book, if you want to read something, read this book. It's a great book, Atomic Habits. Um, I'm not the only one who read it, 3 million copies sold. So that must be a good one. Uh, and actually, that's a tip that I can give you. Rather than, and I know you're very eager to learn about relationship, attachment style, etc. I would actually suggest you to write, to read uh, non-fiction books that are not related to love or relationship. Uh, to really give you that headspace and learn something new that you can uh, sort of implement in your life that has nothing to do with the relationship. That's also something that could help you um, if you feel uh, you struggle with this breakup. So very quickly, I don't, I'm not going to uh, summarize the book, but um, a habit is basically a loop where we have a cue and then we get that craving, a response and a reward. So when we're in touch with our ex, when we send a message, when we receive a notification on our phone, that's a cue. When we have things around ourselves, maybe pictures, or I don't know, maybe they, um, the cereals they were eating in the morning and left at your place, uh, their stuff, etc. That could be a cue, bringing you back to the relationship, bringing you back to the breakup, which is the thing we want to avoid right now. Right now, we want to nurture a sense of independence, a sense of uh, being okay with yourself. Perhaps, of course, you're going to have uh, different uh, negative emotions, sadness, anger, perhaps you're depressed. That's fine. But the idea is to really be okay on your own to uh, process those emotions, to understand those emotions away from the noise, the noise being being in touch with your partner. So understand that and one way for you to break this bad habit of I need to text that person, have this craving um, and I need because you know we've used to speak to each other every now and then and now it's very hard for me to uh, not to have this person in my life. Understand that sending a text or receiving a text from your partner is not a reward. What will happen? Yes, you're going to have a shot of dopamine, right? And you're going to feel great. And this spike will you know, just be a spike and you'll feel bad because that will reinforce this idea of, but we're not together anymore. Okay, you're always chasing something that you can't have. So chasing someone, trying to get back with them at some stage, maybe you can do that, but you need to do that not running after them. You need to do that first by providing that space to yourself, right? Understanding the relationship, understanding the breakup, understanding you, what you need to achieve to rebalance your perception of yourself and the relationship. And therefore, environment is key and I give you two main leverage, two main things that you need to adjust in your life. First tip is to unfollow them. When I say unfollow, it's not blocking because blocking is in a way aggressive and you don't want to be necessarily aggressive with your ex. The idea is to remove any ways that you could be triggered. So, of course, we are always curious. We want to know what people are up to and social media is a way for us to spy on people's life. The problem is when we do that with your ex, that will trigger you unintentionally. And that will also make you feel bad and, and trigger a range of 
really nasty and negative emotions that you don't want and don't need in your life right now. So remove them because, you know, life will go on. Your life, in, it's always a question of rebalancing because maybe you're used to watching their stories and it's very addictive. And it's really, you know, understanding that removing this addiction, trying to cope with this, understanding that this urge, uh, these mechanism are not healthy uh, for you right away, uh, right now. Another element is also removing things from your environment. So stuff that your ex might have uh, left uh, where you live, um, pictures, anything that again uh, would remind you of them. Second tip is your tribe. The second leverage is the people around you. Um, very often we feel uh, isolated after a breakup um, and it's very important to understand and rely on people. So whenever, one simple tip <laughs> that you, I borrowed from Atomic Habit. They don't talk about breakup in Atomic Habit, um, but it's really about if I have an urge, if I want to do something, I'm being mindful. Hold on, Alexis told me it's not going to help me. Uh, the reward that I get would be not what I expected and I feel worse than before. So rather than I'm on my phone, I'm about to text my ex, text your friend. <laughs> or another technique is you can draft it draft it and you don't send it. It's very important uh, because usually within 10 seconds you can really calm down the urge and the craving. Um, that's a strategy that you can use if you want to stop smoking as well. <laughs> um, if you manage to stop this urge within the first 30 seconds then you will be able to reprocess and uh, hold on. Let me use my system uh, two brain, my analytical brain. I know this is not good for me. I don't want to let my gut, my fear to decide what to do uh, or my impulse, okay? We are better than just our impulse. We are animals, yes, but we are human beings. So we are kind of a little bit better. Um, it's very important for you to do those things. Again, it's really about changing slightly your environment to make it easier for you to sustain uh, no contact. So some um, interventions that you can uh, do right away um, is to write down what you feel when you want to message them. Uh, usually it's an emotion, it's a thought that triggers. So sometimes we're just in our bed, usually in our bed when it's dark, and we have this, ah, oh, I want to text them, I want to know, or I want to check their story. Write down. Um, this will also highlight some destructive patterns, the things that you want to do, that you want to convey. Um, try to also associate, understand the um, the emotion, whether you're anxious, you're bored, maybe you're waiting at the bus, you're waiting for your metro, and you feel like, and then bam, you start thinking about your ex. Um, try to map out whether there's a specific thought, a specific memory. All this work is really about bringing more awareness of what's going on in your brain. And the more aware you are, the better it will be to remove any triggers and to remove any sort of, uh, to feel, not having the, the urge, the compulsion to reach out and feeling better actually, because every single day you feel stronger. Um, addiction, because I see it as an addiction, I consider it as an addiction. When you manage to tackle an addiction, that really boosts your confidence because you are freeing yourself from something. So right now, this dynamic is not helping you and you're prisoner of this dynamic, right? That you want to escape. Right? because it's not helping you. As soon as you manage to work on those things and being more mindful and more present and being more constructive with your thought, trust me, you'll feel so much better about yourself, so much more confident. So write down those, uh, those questions, those prompts that you can use, uh, buy a notepad and write all your thoughts whenever you have an urge to reach out to your ex. Remember this thing and it's very important. Imagine that you're going to see a doctor um, and they tell you, does it hurt when you do that? And you say yes. Well, the doctor will reply, then don't do that. Um, it's a very stupid joke. Let me know what you think of this joke. But in a way, maybe remind yourself of me telling you, you're about to text your ex. Is it going to hurt? And you might say, yes, then don't do it.
on this. I'll see you next time. Take care. I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance.